see you have studied certain graphs in your pre pre previous classes for example y is equal to 4x plus 5 now you also learned how to plot this graph and now let's let let's actually plot this graph see the way you have been taught to plot this graph is think x to be 0 y turns out to be 5 if you put x 0 here y would be 5 so x 0 and y 5 is one point lying on the graph then think of y to be 0 then x will turn out to be minus 5 by 4 So these are the two points lying on the graph. So you join these two points and extend the line backward and forward and you have plotted the graph. So now for each value of x, you'll get a corresponding value of y. If you want to know what is the value of y at this x, you just have to look into the graph. This is the value of y at this x. So for each value of x, you get a corresponding value of y. This is what we have studied. Now the point I'm trying to make here is, if you want to know the value of a speed at each value of distance, then you should have a mathematical equation like this, in which you will put distance and you will get speed, or you can put speed and you will get distance. So if you want to have a one-on-one, -on -one, between speed and distance, then you need to have a mathematical equation that governs speed and distance. Okay, so this is what we are looking for. Now, in the previous case, when we reported speed to be 2.5 meter per second, this was supposedly a, cons a, a average speed. Now, if for the sake of learning, let me assume that the person was actually moving at 2.5 meter per second at every moment of his journey. And then, with that assumption, if I attempt to plot a graph between distance, I'm, I'm representing it as distance and time. Fine. We'll go very slowly, but these concepts will be very important for us when we actually have moved much ahead into the course. Now, if I am attempting to draw a graph between distance and time, then how the graph would be like? See, speed is constant. That means for equal interval of time, there would be equal increment in distance. Because speed is distance traveled per unit time. So if speed is constant, that means for every unit of time, the speed, the distance traveled is constant. So for the first unit of time, if the distance traveled is this much, then after completion of first unit of time, the body has come here. Now after completion of second unit of time, the body would have traveled equal amount of more distance. And the body would have come here. Similarly, for the next unit of time, at the next increment on the x-axis, you will have the same amount of increment on the y-axis. So you are actually going to get a straight line like this. If it doesn't seem to be very obvious to you, then you should stop the video and think about it. Spend some quality time thinking about it. Because these small things, if you don't get hold of them, then actually you are not going to get hold of entire chunk of the syllabus. So if you're going to pro if you're having problem understanding this, then actually spend some time thinking about it. But this is how it would be. The speed and time curve would be a straight line, meaning that for equal interval of time, there's an equal increment in distance. So speed is actually remaining constant. So this is for uniform speed, the graph between distance, graph of distance versus time. This is how it would be. But if the speed is not constant, if the speed is varying, maybe initially the man was running slow for warm up and then he speeded up and then he was exhausted or get, got tired and then he slowed down. Then how the curve would be? We are plotting the distance versus time again. Then if he started slowly, 
and then he speeded up and after some time again he slowed down so this is how the curve actually going to be now i drew it straight away because i know the physics now for you as a young kid coming out of class 10 into class 11 with lots of aspirations now how you would be able to draw it straight away i'll help you now without getting into the mathematics physics is more about feel and i'll give you the feel how actually this kind of curve should be made i'll tell you see for initially you take a unit of period of time initially if he is going slow then for one unit of time the distance traveled would be lesser than the distance that would be covered after some time if you take same unit of time i'm taking the same distance suppose this is 1 second i'm taking the length of 1 second second again later on the curve same distance this length and this length keeping them same if you see the rise in the y axis is much more this time as compared to the one in which he started rise in the y axis is much less because the slope is is very is not very steep is it is more the rise actually is very substantially less as compared to the one here the graph is more sluggish here the graph is more steep here so the in the same amount of time the rise in y axis is much high meaning for the same amount of time the distance traveled is much higher if you compare this distance this distance with the one we have here this one is higher this signifies that the speed here is higher so the graph should be like this fine and again when he got tired if you look at this section now if we again take the same unit of time on x axis if you look the rise in y axis now the rise in y axis is only this much is again very less that means he has covered much let, lesser distance lat in, in the latter part of his journey so the speed here is much less the speed here is higher the speed at the start was also less as compared to the mid zone of the journey so this is how the graph would be if the person started slowly he gradually picked up and again and the, in the latter course of the journey he slowed down mind that is from pure reasoning there is no mathematics in it we just using the basic definition of speed and we are through from from logic you can draw this graph now you need to spend some time thinking about it if in different cases how the different kind of graph would be but this is how it should be fine now this is the real thing this is an ideal situation for the sake of convenience that we took this is how it's going to be and the speed is going to be changing at every moment and at every time so we are more interested in this because we have grown now we have moved into class 11 we are no more kid of class 10 so we are going to deal with this kind of thing in kinematics fine not in order to deal with this kind of thing you would understand that you need to know the mathematical equation which is governing distance and time without any equation you can't do anything for for example for example i'll tell you if suppose speed like like the one equation y is equal to oh, 4x plus 3 or whatever 4x plus 5 i think 4x plus 5 i gave you that kind of equation help you to get y corresponding to every x so if you have a similar kind of equation you can know speed at any time or velocity at any speed whatever equation you have suppose you have a equation between distance which i am representing with s s is equal to 5t suppose we have a this kind of equation now for every time for every time for every amount value of time you have a value of s you have a value of distance for example what was the distance traveled when t was 0 at if you put t 0 the distance traveled was 0 what was the distance traveled when t was 1 second if you put t is equal to 1 second then the distance would come out to be 5 i am assuming that them to be in si units so the distance will come out to be 5 meter right because you have a mathematical equation now you can get distance for 
corresponding to every value of time. This is easy. Fine. 